How's everybody doing? Good. Good. The energy's been really good so far. I've been impressed with the memory recall coming back off of the spring uh, and the things that we've had you know, coming on back in. has been an aggressive install uh, going forward, so the guys have really grasped that well. Uh, continuing on the communication and things like that. That's the things I'm looking forward to see. Well, Tom, being here, uh, I know he's a pro and you could uh, probably integrate him, but what effect does that have on him? That that opener, uh, nature? We really well, we, obviously we know we're better when we have them. But I look at it in a sense of we can get better, like we continue to develop guys. Same thought process in the spring when guys are out. You continue to develop the talent around them and you build the strength of the unit. And obviously then when you get them, you feel you're going to be that much better. That's the mentality that I keep. I never look at it as like, woe is me if we get a guy that's a great player that's down. And the other guys are here for a reason too. And uh, we continue to develop them, you know, match them in the scheme, their techniques, and we keep pushing forward. Uh, thanks for coming out. I've got Kevin going home. Right now, and also yeah, right now uh, Artie, Artie and uh, Sid have done some good things. Artie had a couple good PBUs today, as did Kobe. You know, so just continue to see that progression in the competition come on with those four guys. Nothing is solidified, so to see them continue to compete every day. But we're excited about the two young kids too. Uh, just really sharp in his attention to detail, you know, really good feel on the scheme, uh, good football sense and awareness for a young football player. We're excited to see y'all out there. One more time, come on, three, go Hawks. One, two, three. Man, hey, he's taking some huge jumps. You know, really, you look at last season, to me, in my mind, he was the best player on the team. Yeah, he's taking some huge jumps. You know, really, you look at last season, to me, in my mind, last season was his rookie year. Um, coming into it. So now having a really a full off season, again, like you said, he didn't have that coming in after we had drafted him out of Tennessee. So, uh, man, just the maturity, the strength in his body, his explosiveness, the confidence that he has back in his lower body and his movement. Uh, he's always been a really bright kid and understanding the scheme. But the thing that he brings to us is his energy, his competitiveness. He has an edge to him. You know, you come and take the field, you want to have a little piss and vinegar to you, you know. It, it doesn't always have to be nice like his damn ice cream and strawberries. You know, it's, we've got to have something to us, and he brings that to our defense. He has an attitude. With Kobe, <laughs> with Kobe Bryant, uh, is there anything Clint you have seen out here in a week you didn't see on film or scouting him? No, he, that stuff has been consistent. You know, as a young player, you can always tell with some of the college kids, you know, who has a really good cerebral part of the game and understanding. So that's definitely carried over for him since he's been out here. Yeah, really familiar with Artie since high school. I was at Louisville when he was coming out of Miami Northwestern High School. And one thing I've always known is he's got great size, length, athleticism, speed. Uh, was an All-American track kid coming out, so he had all those tools. You know, and since he's been in the league, he's been in various defensive systems and whatnot. But to have the opportunity to bring him here, it's hard to find a kid uh, with those kind of measurables. You know, and talent, and we still feel like he's an ascending player. And sure enough, he has familiarity with the scheme, being in Chicago last year, and you see that benefit pay off since he's been here. He has great command, help out the young guys, but uh, I, I see the arrow up on Artie and where he's going. Do you think your red zone work today? Say again? Red zone work today. Yeah, 50 50. I don't want to give the offense anything. This is our team. I love them, so I want them to do great all the time. But from a competitive nature, when we get between the white lines, I want to kick their ass every day. Um, but there were some good things that were done. Obviously, we got some. Some things that we had to continue to clean up and get on the same page, but that's all in a good day's work. Going back to Artie, how much input did Sean have in that when you guys signed him and just what he knew about him? Absolutely, because we want to find out. Anytime we have a coach on our staff that has background with a player that's coming from another team, or even if you had him in college, you want to use all those resources because when you're bringing a guy in from outside, you want to know like who are they as a teammate, who are they in the locker room, meeting room, things of that nature. So you're bringing the right guy into your organization. So we definitely want to lean on his uh, his feedback. How are you seeing the two, the, the, uh, Cody Barton and Jordan Brooks, and sort of the way they're working together? Uh, Jordan is definitely getting comfortable with making the calls. You know, obviously that was going to be something he had to get used to. Uh, he started off really nice in the spring, and really has good command of it right now. Uh, Cody's done really nice. He's done some really good things. Uh, he gets mad every time I call Diamond, put Diamond in the game because uh, he wants to be out there. But uh, he's done really well. Both those guys complement each other. They communicate really well. they got a good relationship, so um, going well. Yeah, guys like Josh Jones, guys, you know, got multiple players that you want to have out there. And a lot of those are based on matchups. 
you know, and, and the thing is, when we do the coverage stuff, we don't lose anything with Cody either. Uh, safety background in college, he's a very aware guy uh, in the pass game. So uh, we don't lose anything when he does that. He's a really, he's actually a good blitzer too when we need to do that. Thank you to play Josh Bain today. Okay. Outstanding. Love it. We need to see more of those. Uh, Lieutenant Nwosu said the front seven, this defense doesn't work if the front seven doesn't, doesn't really excel. And it, is that true? I know it's true of a lot of defenses, but this one especially. You're spending a lot of your time there at the front seven, too, Absolutely. which you always do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. If the front doesn't, isn't playing at a high level, you don't have a lot of, you're not going to have a chance to be successful. So it starts there. And with the interior guys we have in the D-line between Al and Monet, Puna, Shelby, Quentin, uh, there's no excuses. They should be playing at a high level. That's the expectation. That's the standard, and they've done that and practiced really well. And obviously the guys we have on the edge with Chandler, DT, Mafe, Alton, um, those guys got to play at a high level. You know, and, they, and they've got a nice start off so far to camp, so it's been good. What have you seen out of Marquis player so far? First and foremost, it's great to have him back out here. You know, it's, for a kid that's gone through all the stuff he's had to deal with, um, with getting back healthy and whatnot, I think there's something to commend with the mental toughness you know, to continue to keep battling back and not turn it in, you know, and to give him credit for that. But he's healthy. He's been explosive and twitchy. He's been looking good. And, and again, if he's healthy, he gives us another dimension. He adds another uh, playmaker that we can have to our defense. This is your first season here. So where has he grown the most? And how does he fit into this defense? You know, with Miles, you got to play to your style. You know, first thing people think of when you're dealing with some 3-4 concepts is big guys, long, big, burly. Um, but sometimes you get guys who are really good football players that might not meet the uh, measurable standpoint that you're looking for, and he kind of fits that. Puna fits that, you know. But they're very smart, cerebral guys. They understand blocking schemes, uh, so they can play a down ahead. So maybe now, when they're playing against bigger people, you can be ahead of the snap, and now you don't have to deal with all the combinations and things like that other people do. So he's done really good. Um, it'd be good to see him this uh, preseason because he had a great spring and a nice start again so far. I'm sorry, what do you see that LJ Still doing good. You know, they're still, deal, still doing really good pass rush wise, run game. He's bigger and stronger than he's ever been, you know, obviously. And people wonder, well, why, why does it take so long for those things to happen? You know, and obviously, remember, guys are still physically developing as they get here and whatnot. So he's continued to do well and just battling and, and pushing forward. So I like where he's at. A lot of times you ask me questions about uh, the big guys and where they're at. Ask me next week after the pads get on because that's when the facts uh, come out. Uh, I would say last year was a big uh, learning just before him, uh, schematically and where he fit and how things had to be played. Now in his second year, he's a lot more comfortable, is what I would say. You know, so he just, like anything else, sometimes it takes time. In terms of just the position and what you're asking. Right. How does it compare? I mean, there is more single blocks now for him. He just has to understand where they're coming from. You know, whatnot, and he doesn't have to play as many double teams as what some people may think, uh, depending on front structure and whatnot. So now when he's in it, he can play more vertical. He can be more disruptive. He doesn't have to sit down and try to play blocks like Monet and like Al does, you know, from that standpoint. That, that's the difference. Was, was Pondre just getting a rest day today? Or? That, that must be nice. Gone communication-wise, you've kind of got one guy that you like with Quandre and Jordan and Daryl. Who do you think is really stepping up in terms of that kind of communication that's in the middle? Uh, I look at that as a shared responsibility. You, you don't replace people like Bobby Wagner. You don't replace people like KJ Wright. Those are hard things to do. Obviously, we got great love and we know where with with Jordan and the guys that are here where they're going. But it's impossible to replace those guys. So a lot of times we're going to start by committee, you know, until one person is. So between Quandre. You know, Jamal, Brooks, Cody, and the guys up front can handle things uh, with Shelby and Quentin Jefferson. It's really a leadership by committee is what I would say. You know, that's how you have to try to fix those things. Any concern with Jamal fitting into this new system and losing time and doing that here in the spring? No, no concerns at all. He, well, he learns very, very well. Um, when he came back here in the springtime, he picked it up like that, so there's no problem. What have you learned in a week of doing this job? What's different for you? I take pride in being a very well-organized and detailed person. So it just makes you stay three, four days ahead of schedule with things. And as they come, you got to be ready to, you know, ready to roll and adjust. And I, I'll always take pride in trying to keep an even, cool demeanor when I can, um, when a stuff pops up. So a lot of it's just staying ahead of the game. You got to have a little bit of foresight for the things that are coming, how people are going to attack you, the things that you need to work on, going back through scripts, <laughs> figuring out. Uh, 
the things that you might be a little short on within the scheme that you got to pick up additional reps on where you're going to get that at. You know, when you're coaching D-line or just when you're a position coach, you don't have to worry about that. Now it's the grand scheme of things. That's the most different. Do you find it difficult to, to spread yourself outside the defensive front in your experiences? By nature, that's always what I want to gravitate to. I got a wide back, so I go to where other humans are with wide backs uh, just to see what they're doing. <laughs> you know, but uh, I definitely go out of my way to go find the DBs and the inside backers and spend some time with them. Uh, as well, but naturally, I always try to find the big fellas. A little off topic, but uh, who would you say pound for pound is the best athlete? You trying to start a fight in this damn building, ain't you? Um, I gotta say, loyal to the defense. I'll tell you what, now that Daryl Taylor's pretty unique, so he's definitely. I'm gonna go with DT. I don't care what anybody says. Clint, but I know you preach it and everyone's supposed to do it, but when you're in film after practices, Al Woods, 35 years old, his 12th camp is running 55 yards down the field with Travis Homer in the goal line. He's the only guy there with him. What's that tell you, the rest of the defense? What example does he set at that? He sets the example for the young guys. This is the standard with how we practice. You know, there's guys, whether it's a young player that we just drafted, the, young, the amount of youth we have in this defense, it could be a free, free agent that we bring from another team. You are going to learn the way that we do things. We're not going to adapt to you. There's a reason why this, this organization has been so successful for so long with Coach Carroll. There's a standard to how we do things, and it always starts off with great effort. Al, Monet, those guys embody that. So guys got to understand that's the standard. So if a 350-pound man could be hauling tail to the ball like that because he's getting himself in football shape, then everybody else needs to be doing the same thing. Always. I don't miss anything. Yeah. Thank you, you guys take care.